So, uh, go on then, Huff. What's the word? Oh, well, I didn't pick up much. He served in Manchester and swapped forces, but my uh, contacts are pretty much in the dark. Well, you must have heard something. Uh, oh, I gather his dad's a Yorkshireman, and he served in the regular army in the war. Both pluses in my book. Shift starts at nine, you pair, not five past. Yes, Sarge. What time's the new chap turning up? Officially now, but the train doesn't get in for another six minutes. That's close enough for his first day. Morning, Sergeant. PC Stephen Crane reporting for duty. Morning. Wasn't expecting you till the train got in. Oh, I don't believe in being late, Sergeant. I made my own travel arrangements so that I could get here on time. Very commendable. Hope that approach catches on. You'll be responsible for policing Aidensfield. These are your colleagues here in Ashfordley. PC Ventress, PC Bellamy. Oh, pleased to meet you. You'll enjoy it out in Aidensfield. Nice to meet you, Steve. Ashfordley Police. Mike Bradley, oh. who was our Aidensfield PC, is transferring to CID. Though he's staying on at the police house there. Yeah, he might be in plain clothes now, but he's all right. For a sudden. You'll be in very soon, I hope. Edith Rawlings, Oak Hill Farm. She's telephoned Aidensfield Police House, but there's uh, no answer. What's the problem this time? Not the phantom turnip thieves again. No, a prowler and a suspected break-in, apparently. But Walter, he's out rounding up the sheep and she's on her own. So? Deal with it, Ventress. And take PC Crane with you. Chance to see some of your new patch. <laughs> Shame. I was hoping to uh, brew up a welcome to the station mug of tea. Thanks. But I'm happy to get straight to work. This farm we're going to, is there a history of problems there? It's just since the kids left, and Edith Rawlings has developed a rather vivid imagination. We get lots of uh, false call-outs. Right then. Police cars are parked out here, I noticed. I'm sorry, but surgery is closed at the moment. We're hoping to reopen sometime next week. You must be Jenny. Liz Merrick. Doctor Liz Merrick. Oh, doctor, I'm so sorry. I wasn't expecting you until next week. No, it's my fault. I changed my plans. I realised I was free this week and thought, why not come up, sort things out before I take over? Right. Well, I'll show you what's what, shall I? Please do. Seems a keen lad. Very smart. Well turned out. No risk of mistaking him for others working around here, then. Uh. Your first case is a fully-fledged CID officer. Anything interesting? Surveillance work. Gerald Arthur Dunphy, Liverpudlian, on the run, wanted for armed robbery. Has a girlfriend lives in the area. They want you to keep an eye on her house. Just thought you might try and use it as a bolt hole. OK. The girl's out at work all day, so it's likely he'll turn up at night. It's the off chance he'll show, but feather in your cap if you spot him. feeding hens when I heard... Heard what, Edith? Footsteps. I was sure someone was running away, and then I saw the window. It was smashed. <laughs> she thought she was a rotten window, got it choused, and then run off. Natural enough. Yeah, well, it was me that broke window this morning while she was still in bed. I was trying to open it, and I slipped, put my hand through it. Yeah, stupid, really. I've uh, not but gotten back, otherwise I'd have phoned to explain. So sorry wasting your time, Alf. That's all right, Edith. What about the footsteps you heard? Someone running away? Yeah, well, she's troubled with the nerves, is Edith. She, uh, she sometimes thinks she hears things. Alf knows about it. Would you like us to check the rest of the house with you? Make sure nothing's missing? No. There's no need. Nobody's been in here. Sorry again, Alf. That's all right. You uh, best pop into the doctors, Edith. They can give you things for nerves these days. We've had to manage with a temporary locum doctor all way. He was very good, but it's not the same. 
A number of patients' records have been transferred recently, I've noticed. Well, people weren't sure what was going on, you see, so a few have been leaving to sign on at neighbouring practices. It's worrying. Never mind. Now I'm here, I'm sure we can get the word round. Things should pick up. Hello, surgery. Oh, yes, sir, you're in luck. She's just arrived. I'm who's calling, please? Dr. Robson from St. Thomas's. Um, actually, um, I'm sorry, but she's just popped out. Uh, shall I get her to call you back? OK, fine. I'm sorry about that. I don't want to get distracted. I have a lot to get to grips with here. Poor old Edith. Lord knows what she'll be imagining next time. Well, I wouldn't be so sure she imagined it. Rollins is covering something up. He didn't break that window open, did it? It was smashed from the outside. Do you not think it's worth pursuing? I can understand your keenness, wanting to impress people on your first day. But if you'd broken it like it said, there'd have been glass on the outside. It was all on the inside. And he wasn't very keen with look round. I wouldn't go looking for trouble where there isn't any, Steve. You'll only antagonise folk. Must be Steve. Hello. Mike Bradley, how are you doing? Thanks very much for doing the washing up, by the way. I didn't get a chance this morning. The, uh, the other lads are over at the pub, if you fancy a drink. Yes, they told me. Unfortunately, I won't be able to make it. I've, uh, I've got surveillance tonight. I fancy CID. When did you get the move? Transferred last week. Came as quite a surprise, actually. Well, lucky you. Yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, is there um, anything else about the house you need to know? No. All right, well, we'll have a good chin wag when I get back. Sure. Well, I think a village copper should always make himself known to the local publican. I mean, there's not much goes on around here that I don't know about. And I can put him straight about some of the dodgy characters he might have to deal with. I'm sure he'd appreciate that, Oscar. Well, for your information, Oscar, I met him earlier. He came in to ask directions for the police house. He looked very dishy to me. Off touch of the film star, I thought. Yes, he is good looking. <laughs> well, I can't hang around here all night waiting for Errol Flint to show up. I'll see you. Merrick, Liz Merrick. Very nicely spoken. And she seems friendly enough. Probably comes from a wealthy background. I mean, it takes years and years of training to be a doctor, you know. You know, when I was a little lad, the old doctor once let me listen through his periscope to me chest wheezing. She's worried about the patient list. How do you mean? Well, with all the uncertainty, some of our patients have signed on with other doctors. But if the numbers keep dropping, then the practice would either close or have to merge with one in Ashford Lee. Well, as a semi-regular customer, I don't like the sound of that. Me neither. A community needs its doctor, especially a nicely spoken one. Jenny, is everything all right? I'm sorry to call on you like this, but... Vernon Scripps, a plea.
pleasure to meet you, Dr Merrick. <laughs> it's imperative Aidan's Field keeps its surgery, Doctor. And I'm here to offer my services to help restore confidence in the practice as a whole. Just explain your idea, Vernon. Well, my proposal is you type a general letter explaining to people that you're here and the surgery is back in business. And I will undertake to deliver a copy personally to every patient. Well, a letter's a good idea, but why not just post them? Oh, no, no, no. Round here, the uh, personal touch is all. No, hand delivery with a reassuring doorstep chat. That's the answer. Won't that be rather time-consuming? Doctor, I'm one of those who believes in giving to the community, not taking from it. Well, I'm really very thankful, Mr Scripps. Vernon, please. Think of it as a chance to renew faith in the dispensation of medical care for Aidensfield. <laughs> Sorry, should have warned you. He's a little bit eccentric, but he means well. When the sun goes down, ain't lonesome, ain't lonesome. When you mama ain't in town, love when the sun goes down. When I love you all through the week. Hilltop Farm, you say? Oh. I'll come over and have a look. Oh, good morning, Steve. Wouldn't rush your transfer to CID just yet. If I were you, I'd just spent the entire evening in a freezing car with a thermos of cold coffee. Sounds like fun. <laughs> Do you know a place called Hilltop Farm? What's that? Ever said a call about a break in some place called Hilltop Farm? Well, on second thoughts, maybe you should take up the surveillance, then I could get my old job back. <laughs> No, James, I really don't want to discuss this any further. All right? Are you OK? Yeah, sorry. It's just a tricky situation to deal with on the phone. I didn't mean to. No, no, it's all right. You couldn't help but hear. Anyway, what do you make of it? Very good letter. You should encourage people to stay with us. Just as long as your friend Mr Scripps just hands them out. He must understand it would be unethical if he appeared to be touting for trade. I'm sure he'll do exactly as you say. I imagine you'll find life up here rather different after London. Well, yes, but hospitals can be a bit impersonal. I want patient contact. You've not been in general practice before. I spent the last three years as a senior houseman to a consultant orthopaedic surgeon. At St Thomas's? Mm-hmm. And talking of London, I was expecting a van first thing this morning with all my bits and bobs. I wonder where he's got to. Rub in the yard, he'll have all the paintwork off. Oh. Mr Vernon says that he wants this taxi to be immac... Im imac... something. Immaculate. I mean, I've got to wear my best suit, and so I look the part, because I am now an emba... an, em an emba... something. And be dexterous? No. And the traffic lights? No. Ambassadors, Bernard. Unpaid ambassadors bringing good news to the doorsteps of the parish. What little scam have you dreamt up now, then? Why is it whenever I offer to do a genuine selfless act, it's invariably met with cynicism? Come on, David. We have important community service to perform. You needn't to bother coming out. You are? Jack Farrow. It's my farm. One of your farmhands called in, reporting a break-in. I was up in Top Field. He should have waited till I got back. 
He said the back door had been forced open. Lock smashed. I better check round. Now it's been taken. Needn't involve you. Well, seeing as I'm here, better have a look. You don't seem very concerned. No, all they took were a bit of food. Half a bottle of whiskey I'd been keeping. Be a tramp or something. Why do you assume that? We get them round here. Maybe slept rough in my barn last night. Some go up top field this morning, broke in before fireman's arrived for work. You check the rest of the house? <laughs> There's no need. They're after food and booze, that's all. Well, why don't we take a look around? There's no need! Now, if you don't mind, I've work to get on with. Sorry I wasted your time. That's the second time someone said that in as many days. Do you know Walter Rawlins, Oak Hill Farm? Of course I do. He's a neighbour. Why? Just wondered. Mike said it's hard to get him talking. He's had to buy the job. Well, maybe he's shy. Can be difficult, you know, starting up new places, new faces. Yeah, he sounds a bit obsessive. Doesn't like dirty dishes in the sink, keeps his room in order, you know, uniform always hung up. Well, maybe it's his dad's army influence. I thought you said having a dad in the army was a good thing. I did. There's nothing wrong with being tidy, having pride in your appearance. Well, that's rich, coming from you. No, what I can't understand is uh, why I didn't come to the pub for a drink last night. Steve Crane's dealt with a break-in at Hilltop Farm. Suspect possibly a vagrant, stole some food and a half bottle of whiskey. Keep an eye out, will you? Yes, Sarge. When you finish supping your tea. Now wouldn't it be nice to get on with me neighbours? But they make it very clear... Ah, oh, good day, madam. I'm here on behalf of the new doctor, Liz Merrick, with a personal letter informing you of her intention to maintain the Aidensfield General Practice Surgery. David? You see, the personal touch. She'll read that now. Good day, sir. I'm here on behalf of... Listen, if you're trying to flog me anything, you're wasting your time. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not a salesman. <laughs> I'm here on behalf of the new doctor. I haven't sent for any doctor. Uh, no, no, I'm here ah, to... Ah, you want Harry Park in number seven? Ah, his pals have been playing him up so chronic. Oh, <laughs> we uh, Just read that, will you? There's no hiding place down. Come on. Let's have a look at you. Yeah. Right, you. Come on. Is there any history of trouble between Farrell and Walter Rawlins? Well, they're both sheep farmers. Good friends, as far as I know. There's definitely something odd going on. Neither of them were keen to have the police round. Oh, coincidence. Farmers are like that. They like to keep their distance. I'm sure they're both covering something up. Ah, oh, Steve. I think I've found your thief from Hilltop Farm earlier. He's one of our local nerd who wells. Wife kicked him out a few weeks back. Has he admitted to the break-in? No, but I did find half a bottle of whiskey on him. He's in the cells. Claimed he spent all night on a bench. Could that be George Buckley from the new estate? Yeah. Where did you know? Away you go then, George. That's yours. Stop. I'm well, sorry if I've spoiled things, Phil, but he was on that bench all night. I don't think it's vagrants we should be looking for. There was something else behind that breaking.
Right, little Sherlock Holmes, we've got here, I reckon. Oh, come on, Phil, be fair. It's early days. He just, uh, he's just keen to do a good job at all. Well, I have to say, as starts go, it's none too promising. Are you out for a pint tonight? Oh, sorry, lads. Uh, duty calls. Shame, that. <laughs> Very funny, lads. So, uh, Mike on nights again, then, is he? Yes. Exciting life in the CID, isn't it? There we are, Bill. One large scotch. Haven't won the pools, have you? No, it's not like that. Just fancied a change from your bitter. Then a peg can afford large whiskies. Something must be wrong with your beer, Ralph. There's nothing wrong with my beer, Ralph, and you know it. It's in perfect condition. Anyway, tell me about this new lad of yours. He's not teetotal, is he? Certainly hasn't shown his face in here yet. Oh, honestly, the way you lot go on. He'll come in when he's ready. He's just taking his time settling in, that's all. Well, we just want to get to know him. Yeah, well, maybe he doesn't want to know us. Seems a very ambitious lad to me. A little closer to the window, I think. I've decided to hold my first surgery tomorrow. Tell all patients I'm on call from then. Right. By the way, that chap phoned. James? Uh, Dr. Robson? I put him off. Did I do right? <sighs> He's the consultant I mentioned. We were close. The old story. I shouldn't have got involved. He's married. He said he'd leave his wife, but never actually did. So I ended it, and now he says he wants me back. How do you feel about that? I'm pretty churned up, to be honest. Is that why you took this on up here? Make a fresh start? Yeah. It's better this way. It's over. Get off. Here. There doesn't seem to be anyone about. Tell them what I'm about then. Hi. But if you see anyone, don't start explaining about the new doctor. Leave that to me, all right? Yeah, all right. Come in. You wanted to see me, Sergeant? Steve, good. How are you settling in? Police house OK? Getting on all right with Mike Bradley? Not seen much of him, really. I understand you're concerned about these reported farmhouse break-ins. Yes, there's something not right. Well, they sounded straightforward enough. I went to the market and spoke to the auctioneer. I think maybe some sort of fiddle's going on. If we're going to investigate, we need a reason. Do you have hard evidence for these suspicions? Well, no. Not exactly, Sergeant. I know you're keen to do well, lad. Look, take a seat. I think it's time we had a wee chat. Excuse me. I 
I've just popped it in the letterbox. There was a man. Well, where's he gone? Oi, he ran off. <laughs> Probably the sight of you in your posh outfit, David, frightened him. <laughs> well, he, he had a brick with him. A brick? Yeah, well, then he dropped it. And now he's just disappeared into thin air, like magic. Poof! No, no, no there was a man, Mr Vernon, honest. Yes, well, he's not here now. Come on. Aidensfield isn't Manchester, Steve. It's a small community. Policing needs the personal touch. You've got to get to know who's who on your patch, OK? Sure. For example, I've had Oscar Blaketon on. He owns the Aidensfield Arms, but he used to be station sergeant here. He's puzzled that a new policeman's moved in and hasn't made himself known. Does he have any particular problem that needs my attention? No, he just thought you might have dropped by to say hello. Have you had a chance to do that with other local businesses? Shops and so on? Not yet. I've been fairly occupied. My dad has a motto. Get yourself in order before you order others about. <laughs> Sound advice. Sergeant in the army, isn't he? Do you get on well? Fine. Don't get to see him much. He's posted abroad. Is that all, sir? Just about. Take some time to get to know people, Steve, OK? Yes, Sergeant. And make an effort to get to know us, too. The lads will fill you in the local characters. You'll find we're not a bad team here. Oh. Oh, morning, Steve. <laughs> yeah, it's tough working nights. You never know where you are, do you? Best get back out there. Hey, have you uh, moved this photograph? Oh, mate, I've accidentally. I was uh, tidying a few things away. Yeah. Well, don't. Okay. Tell. <clears throat> Hello, stranger. I can find a bit of police, Gina. Well, I gather you're finding CID work and have it strawbacks. Yeah, well, I've just spent the last two nights with nothing more to do than count the stars and watch Tomcats on the prowl. Fascinating stuff. <laughs> Haven't brought your dishing new housemate with you, then? No, he doesn't seem too keen on pubs. Well, look who's here. Hello there. Nice to see you again. Gina, isn't it? We met the other day. That's right. PC Crane, I'm the new constable here. Oh, Oscar Blakeson. Do you have a first name? Stephen. Well, Stephen, it's uh, good of you to find the time to uh, pop in here at last. I expect you've been busy, out and about, checking up on your new patch. Well, I've not had time yet. I hear you're a bit of a legend in the area, Mr Blakeson. Used to be sergeant at Ashfordley. Yeah, that's a long time ago now. Well, why don't you pop in tonight? Sample the quality of our beer? I'll try and do that. I'll be seeing you. Mike? There you go. What did I tell you? Smashing fella. Good afternoon. You must be our new constable. Pleased to meet you, Vernon Scripps. One of your brake lights isn't working. You sure? Get it fixed, please. I'll have it attended to immediately. Actually, one of my family's businesses is a garage constable, although at the moment I'm presently engaged in good works for the community. <laughs> really? Oh, well, we saw a man with a brick. Well, I mean, he didn't, I did. I mean, he, he thought he just disappeared off into thin air. Oh, boy. Now, what he'd done is he'd, like, he dropped his brick and he'd run off. We were out uh, delivering letters for the new doctor. We were out on a farm and David here thought he saw someone lurking with a brick. <laughs> He's a nice lad, but uh, not the sharpest knife Which, in the Which uh, farm was this? When you through a storm Hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark At the end of a storm 
there's a golden sky and the sweet silver song of love. Walk on through the wind. Walk on through the rain. Thought these might brighten things up when you have patience. Thank you. That's very thoughtful of you. Dr. Merrick speaking. James, how many times do I have to ask? Will you please keep out of my life? I'll, um, I'll leave you to it. Mr. Rawlins. Running my own business. But it's also my business. This isn't your farm. Why are you here? It's at Matthews' place. He's away for a few days. Asked me to keep an eye on it. Did he ask your friend Mr. Farrell to keep an eye on it too? It's a shame you didn't get here earlier. There's just been a break in. Don't you think you should see a doctor about that? I'm fine. Showed me as he opened the door and I fell. It's just I didn't really see him. Well, what were you doing there in the first place? Taking a look around the patch, like Oscar Blakeson was saying. So why didn't you radio in and let us know what had happened? I hadn't anything definite to report. PC Crane. Oh, Mr Matthews, you're back good. Yeah, I'll be out right away. Do you uh, want me to come with you? No, thanks. I can handle it. Kept a small amount of cash under the mattress, about twenty pound. Ah, all well, these are on the floor. Yours? Ah, yes, right. Thank you. So our man breaks in, comes straight up to this room, turns over the mattress, finds oh twenty pounds, and drops half of it on the floor. He probably heard your motorbike, panicked. Sure, you only had twenty pounds under that mattress. I said so, didn't I? Why did you ask Walter Rollins to look after the place? Are you expecting a break in? No, no. I was away, just a precaution. And you have no idea who it might be? No, none at all. Madam, I'm here on behalf of Dr. Merrick. Oh, that was quick. Sorry. I only phoned in ten minutes since. I think it's sciatica again, Doctor. Play me up something terrible. Uh, no, Mrs. But I'm not a doctor. I'm here yeah, to... I couldn't settle to sleep last night at all. Chat before you, what was his name? Doctor Always, that's right. Uh, not a doctor, Allway. Pardon? It was called Allway, not Always. Always, that's right. No, no, he never had an S. He was always, always. Always. That's him. Any road. He gave me some tablets, and I've run out of them now. I think it is sciatica, don't you, Doctor? Mrs Winstanley, I'm not in a position to diagnose your condition. Thought you said you were a doctor. No, I'm only here to give you this. You feel my thigh. You'll see what I mean. You better leave all that to me, Mrs Winstanley. I'm here in response to your call. Dr Merrick? He said he were Dr Merrick. I never said a word. I just said... We'd better move inside. Stick to handing out the letters, eh, chaps?
Issued my first prescription. And Mrs. Wynne Stanley should be in later. Begins to make it all seem real. Oh, hi, Mike. Um, this is Dr. Merrick. This is PC. And uh, no, now, uh, DC Mike Bradley. Hello. Hi. I thought I'd just Surgery. drop in, see how you were settling in. I uh, used to be the local Bobby Randy. Oh, I see. It's nice of you to pop in. Jenny's been looking after me very well. Well, I'm glad to hear it. A bit of an emergency, Doctor. Mrs. Jepson's just gone into labour. Her husband's away, she can't drive, and there's no midwife available. Tell her I'm on my way. Where is she? A way out in Scarsdale Moor, I'm afraid. Where's that? I have a map in the car. I know Mrs. Jepson's place. I'll point you in the right direction, Doctor. <laughs> Delta Alpha 24 to control over. Alpha 24 to control. Ah, oh, Mike. Don't really know how to break this to you. What? Your liver puddly and villain's just been picked up. Oh, not at her house, and I've missed her. Nope. In Dover, trying to get to France. Dover? I've just wasted two whole nights. Welcome to CID work. Uh, Sarge, Steve Crane's just radioed in. He's out on the moor with a badly injured man, the victim of an assault who's in need of urgent medical attention. Whereabouts? Well, he's not exactly sure, but he's got a definite idea of the three assailants. Well, he's a dogged lad. We'll see that for him. He said it's a sort of deserted house. He spotted a flat stone with a hole in it. Sounds to me like a shooting lodge up by Ling Chop Cross up on Scarsdale Moor. It's on the map there. Took a fair bit of time to get an ambulance up there. Well, the bloke's in pretty bad shape. The new doctor was called out to deliver Mrs. Jepson's baby. That's quite close. Might just catch it. Good. And get Bellamy in. Let's find out what these three have got to say for themselves. in there. How 
is he doing? He's too bad to be in us. Can you tell me your name, please? Bill. Bill Peck. His pulse is very weak. Ribs fractured, possible internal bleeding. I need to get him to a hospital fast. Elsenby's the nearest to here, isn't it? Well, I'm not sure. I'm new to the area. Oh, well, that's handy. So am I. We need to be very careful how we move him. Very quickly. Can you live out here? My surgery's in Aiden Field. Really? That's your own station. Listen, you drive. I need to be with him in the back seat. Oh. Yeah, I was delivering a baby up here when the police contacted me. Well, that was lucky. Very. Especially as you apparently had no idea where you were. Like I said, I'm new to the area. Must be still there. Let's get out of here quick. No worry, he'll not on them. Hey, hey, come here. Evening. We'd like a word if we may. We have three farmers on suspicion of a serious assault and a bag full of banknotes from Bill Pegg's garden. Have you any idea what this is about? Afraid not, Sarge. We're going to have to wait for Steve to fill us in. We'll keep them overnight. Sort out in the morning. Oh. Well, I was wondering where you got to. Yeah, the police called me out on an emergency. An assault victim. Did the birth go all right? Oh, fine. Lovely baby boy. Mm. I feel I'm well and truly here now. So you think we can settle in on our rural life? Well, I've brought one new life into the world and helped keep an existing one with us. Yes, I think I can make a go of it. Great. Fancy celebratory drink. No, thanks. I'm exhausted. I'll, I'll see you at surgery in the morning. Stick to handing out letters, chaps. Stuck up, madam. Well, you like the way she spoke. Taking years and years of training, you said. All right, Bernard. I've changed my mind. Time is money to someone like me, and she's taking liberties. Doctor or no doctor, she can cough up for the petrol and the taxi. I want you to run up an invoice so I can take it round. Income tax evasion. The auctioneer at the market explained, but I knew I'd need hard evidence, that farmers occasionally falsify the size of flocks claim more sheep die in the winter and at lambing, etc. So these three were pretending to have fewer sheep than they actually had? Exactly. They sold their official flock through the market, informed the revenue as normal, but they took the rest secretly to a private dealer in the overseas land market. A cash-in-hand deal not declared to anyone. They didn't bank it in case it was traced, but kept under the mattress. Bill Pegg's a farm labourer. He'd worked for all three, knew what they were up to. He stole the money, knowing they wouldn't report it to us. And he nearly paid a heavy price. You've been very lucky. But for Alf Ventress working out where you were and Mike Bradley knowing a doctor was in hand, Peg could have died. Yes, Sergeant. None of us knew you were out there. You didn't radio in until it was too late. Now, maybe I should have listened to your first instincts about the break-in. She did well to follow them up, but you should have kept us informed. I see that now, Sergeant. I hope so. Nevertheless, I suppose congratulations are in order. Where is she? Where's the doctor? Oh, Mr. Scripps, the very man. We all owe a huge debt of gratitude to this gentleman and a big thank you for his selfless act of kindness in informing you all personally that the surgery was back in business. Your stoical community spirit has helped smooth my path considerably. Thank you, Mr. Scripps. Are you here to see me professionally? 
There's a bit of a cue, I'm afraid. Uh, no, no, no. I just popped in to make sure all was well. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have been able to, well, help in my humble way. <laughs> Well, I hope Sarge tore him off a strip. With self-centred blokes like that, doesn't usually go in one ear, let alone come out the other. Think of you lads a drink? Oh, yeah, right, sure. Thanks, Steve. Oh, yes, if you insist. Yeah, sounds a good idea. Evening, Gina. Hiya. Can I get a drink for my colleagues, please? Oh. Well, I hope you'll find us up here not so much colleagues as uh, mates. <laughs> Thanks. You know, my dad says a colleague is someone you can trust, but it takes a long innings to make a real mate. <laughs> 